It is now possible to make believable AI-generated images and videos of yourself. Thanks to tools like Flux AI, Flux Gym, and Runway's Gen 3 Alpha, you can now make videos of yourself like this and this. The results are so jarring, it honestly feels like living in everything, everywhere, all at once. And seeing these believable videos confuses my brain because that really looks like me driving a race car, riding on the back of a hippo, or whatever I'm doing here. The method to make these is not only surprisingly easy thanks to the awesome developers, but it's also incredibly versatile and fun. So today I'm gonna show you how to put yourself in any scene with AI, and then we're gonna make that image come to life with movement. I'm super excited, I know you are too. All right, let's go. To make images like these, we're gonna use Flux, which is a completely free and open source text to image AI model. Now we've covered Flux before in a previous video, and honestly, I was blown away by how believable the images were compared to other models. But one huge issue was that I wasn't able to put myself in those images because we needed one key component, which we're gonna show you how to do today, and that is LoRa's. So Flux can produce images with a high degree of visual coherence and prompt adherence, but by default, you can't make images of yourself because it doesn't know what you look like. And that's where LoRa's come in. LoRa's are like expansion packs for AI models. There are a bunch of LoRa's that do a whole Whole bunch of stuff, but mostly they will either add concepts, styles, or characters. For example, there are lores that make your pictures look like they're from an old school GameCube video game. There's ones that make it look like you're in a fantasy movie. Or more importantly, there's ones that you can create that will add you into any scene. There are a few ways to make lores trained on yourself, but by far the best and easiest way to do it for free is to use Flux Gym, which is as easy as a one-click install. To install Flux Gym, download Pinocchio, then search for Flux Gym here, and all you need to do is click install and Pinocchio will do everything it needs to do, and it will just open up right there in the browser. Now, if you don't have a super powerful machine and still want to train Allura of yourself, you can actually go over to Civit AI, which will let you train Allura, and I was able to get some really amazing results. But that one does cost about two dollars per Laura trained so it's not an entirely free method just as a heads up so here is what flux gym looks like and the ui is super simple and easy to use but there are a few tricks that i've actually found and i'm going to recommend you going from the left to right in order to make sure everything goes perfectly smooth so let's start by giving this Laura a name i'll call this one nate local v2 but you can name this anything. Next, we wanna add a trigger word, which can be anything, but most likely you're gonna want something that is weird and not already inside of the model. For example, I might use Nate X V2. And the reason for this is because if we use a common word or even a name, it will mix in this Laura with whatever is already trained inside of Flux. And that could produce some weird quirky results. Other than that, we're gonna leave everything here on their defaults. And then I'm gonna get some pictures of myself. And here I have a set of about 17 or 20 or so images that were pulled from old photos, whether they're from a phone camera, DSLR, it didn't really matter. The main important feature though, is that they capture my face clearly Though some examples also show my whole figure, others show some rough details, and having this amount of variance will help. One thing I will recommend though is that if you train it on photos of yourself that you actually like, or in clothes that you actually like, it will produce nicer generations because all the generations will have you in the same hairstyle or same clothing style similar to what you fed it. Now to import the images, just select all of the photos, drag them here into this window, and you're gonna see that the captions automatically get the trigger word we set earlier. Honestly, this is all we need to do and we're good to go. There's also this little button here that will automatically caption the images, but 90% of the time, you actually do not wanna do this. Flux already has a really good internal captioning that understands the images that you feed it, and sometimes adding more captions will just overtrain the model in a bunch of directions rather than focusing it on what we actually need, which is just ourselves and our figure. So let's just leave the captions as super simple captions, like just the trigger word or a name when creating a Laura for a character. Now that we have this done, we're all set and we can hit train, which will take a few hours depending on what computer and hardware specs you need. If you open up the command prompt, you can see that it is doing everything that it needs to do to produce Allura. So at this time, you can go out, watch a movie, get some pizza, come back, and it'll probably still have about 30 minutes left 
But once it's done, we now have the Laura in the output folder, which we can access by pressing this button right here. If it doesn't show up automatically, hit refresh or copy and paste the link, and then you'll be able to access that. Now, depending on the amount of epochs that we trained, you're gonna see that there's a few different Lauras, and most likely you're just gonna wanna go with the furthest trained model, but we can also copy all of these into the same folder and import this into Flux. To open this up in Flux, we're gonna be using Forge UI. We covered installing Forge and Flux in an earlier video, but for the quick rundown to install it, you can pull it right here from this GitHub page. So here we have the LoRa and the default value is gonna be set to one, which stands for 100%, but we wanna actually crank this value up to 1.5, which will apply this LoRa extra hard. And then we'll type in the trigger word and a prompt. So I'll type in an illustration of Nate or Nate on the back of a hippo. And I wanna make sure that my output size is set to 1024 by 1024 or some sort of variation that keeps those values below 1 million pixels by the end of it. Now I can go ahead and hit generate and nice. This is looking super good. You can see it's actually generated an illustration that looks like me and we can do a whole lot more with this and have a whole lot more fun. So I ended up doing an example one where I typed in Nate driving a race car. There's cars in the background. I'm wearing a race car uniform or a racer suit. And the image ended up coming out so nice that I figured that we should try bringing this to life. So here we're gonna bring this over to Runway. And once we're over in Runway, we wanna make sure that we're set to Runway's Gen 3 Turbo. This model surprisingly uses less credits to generate videos, but works so much better than Runway's Gen 3 version. Now you're gonna see that once we import in the image, it only takes in 16 by nine aspect ratios. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And another thing that you'll see here is a prompt section. I've actually noticed that the generations that are created without a prompt tend to turn out so much better than ones with a prompt. But if you did want a very specific motion, such as turning of the car wheel or something that you have not seen in the generations before, you can go ahead and try and goad it into doing that by typing it in here. But other times it just honestly does whatever it wants to. So don't really wor worry too hard about prompting so much in this section here. And then we can leave this at five seconds instead of 10 seconds. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit generate and let's see what it comes up with. Yeah, wow, this looks so amazing. And as you can tell, there are so many more awesome things that we can do with this. So just like that, you now know how to make an image of yourself and take that image, bring it to life with video, and if you've checked out our previous video about Gaussian splatting, then you probably know that there is another really awesome technique in which you'll be able to generate an image, generate a 3D turnaround of that image into a video, and then also make an actual 3D model that you can use and import. And it doesn't actually just stop with just car models, but it can turn into entire worlds with cities and so much more. So that's something that we're working on. We're gonna be covering that in a future video. Make sure you guys stay subscribed so you don't miss that. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope to catch you in the next one. All right, peace.